hey, hey, uh, and welcome to Making a Drum Machine, episode two. Hey, hey. In the last video, we talked about the master clock of the system, and today we're gonna be talking about the sequencer. So this guy right here. Here it is. This might look a bit weird because it has all these patch points, but this is actually a very simple CD4017 sequencer. But instead of switches, I'm just using patch points and patching to program the sequencer. Patching the sequences is definitely not the most practical way of doing it, but but you know, I had an idea and I wanted to try it out. And, and, and at least it's fun. And there are some benefits to it. I can kind of program more than four channels, even though this is a four channel sequencer. But I will talk a bit more about that as I demo this later. Here's the schematic for the module. Wow. Okay, well, um, so it's a very bare and bones 4017 gate sequencer, as well as a simple CD4081 AND logic circuit. We need the AND circuit to separate the gates of different steps at the output. Because if we only had the 4017 and let's say all the steps are active, then the output would be a constant high voltage. But then as we feed the output to an AND logic gates input, and then you feed your master clock to the other input, then the AND logic will kind of chop your gate output to individual gate outputs at every step. And the length of the gate will depend on your clock's duty cycle. I don't know if that made any sense, but I do hope it made some sense. Maybe I'll draw something. I don't know, man. Fuck this shit. I also designed a circuit board for this. Thank you PCB Way for sending me the boards. And I forgot to add the decoupling capacitors for the IC chips, just like I did with my master clock module. But you can add them to this very easily. Just just solder a cap from the power input pin of the IC chip to the ground pin. And that's it. I also screwed up the reset input of the circuit. So do not connect that to anything. Or you might break the chip. So now this can only do 8 step sequences, but I'm fine with that for now. I might do an updated version of the PCB, and if I do, then I will change the link in the description. Oh, and there's a link in the description for the Gerber files for the PCB, if you want to order one yourself. I forgot to mention that. You can use switches instead of the patch points, and I would probably recommend that. But if you end up making it a patchable sequencer like this, then then you need you need a resistor for every patch point, or you will fry the 4017 chip, like I did many times before realizing this. Well, wow. Well, well, that's about it. Let's go check out the module. Boop boop. Gate sequencer, more like gay sequencer, am I right? I'm not gay, and I'm not homophobo. Okay, here we go. Well, here it is. And like I said, the reset doesn't work, and I didn't realize that before making the panel, so this thing here is not connected to anything behind the panel. Here are the four rows of eight step sequences you can patch and then you patch them here to these inputs. 
These are the inputs of the AND gates. And here's the clock input, and it's normaled to the other input of all the AND gates. And here are the outputs of the AND gates. So how it works is that you patch a clock to your clock input. And there you see the sequence is running now. And then we can take any step. Let's take the first step of the first row and plug it in to the first AND gate. And then we take the output of the first AND gate and connect it to, let's say, a bass drum. And we should hear a bass drum. And we do. Wow. And now how the programming works is I simply, you know, take another cable, I connect it to the first cable, and then plug it to another step. Simple. And I don't really need to plug all these cables to the same row, so I can plug this here on the second channel and it works just the same. And the reason I said this kind of has more than four channels is that even though we do have only four AND gates here, I can still take a single gate, let's say from there, and plug it in to, let's say, another drum voice, like this. So now I have two drum voices going, but I still have three empty channels on the sequencer. Well, that's pretty cool. Okay, let's patch something else. Let's make a hi-hat. Let's do something like this, maybe. Nope. And then we keep on adding banana cables. And this would be pretty hard if I wasn't using banana cables, because I can stack the cables. You kind of do need stackable cables for this to work, because otherwise you would need multiples of multiples. Okay. And the rest of it works exactly the same. Let's use channel 4, let's say. Connect that to a cowbell. Well, now we have a sequence going. And then we can use the synced clocks like we did in the video about the clock module. So the second clock is now synced to the first clock. So this one is our, you know, the clock we're using for the sequencer. And this way we can get kind of a weird clock going that's not like a constant square wave. It's, it's a burst of square waves and we can get weird weird grooves probably this sounds kind of cool so I can kind of get a swing going. Well, that's the sequencer. I haven't decided yet, but the next videos are probably gonna be about some of the voices. 
probably starting with the cowbell because you know that's that's all you really need for a drum machine and 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 i guess that's it thank you once again pcb way for sending me the circuit boards and thank you for watching the video and i will see you in the next one peace bye go away the video is over go away you stupid fuck